The Seasteading Institute conducted an investigation into the flagging options for early seasteading ventures. At the Seasteading Institute, our mission is to further the establishment and growth of permanent ocean communities, enabling innovation with new political and social systems. Because most of the world's territory is divided amongst states currently recognized by the United Nations, international waters, the only part of the globe that is not claimed, is apparently the only plausible way of challenging the geopolitical status quo and fulfilling the Seasteading Institute's mission. While the long-term goal is the creation of large cities or communities, this needs to be preceded by smaller projects that will incrementally help us reach the long-term goal. The near-term idea is to use ships as the, as the early seasteading models. However, one cannot simply take a ship into international waters and claim independence. International maritime law requires all ships to fly a flag of an existing nation, as those that do not can be considered pirates and treated as such by existing nations. For most countries, there are strict regulations for those individuals or companies that wish to fly their flag. However, there are a number of countries that operate open registries, also known as flags of convenience. These countries grant ships the permission to fly their flag with a minimum of restrictions. While a number of basic international treaties regarding piracy, drug traffic and slave trade still apply, the countries operating those registries are often small and lack the capacity or willingness to control their world fleet. Flying the flag of an open registry seems to be the best option for early seasteading ventures, since this would provide the highest possible degree of autonomy and independence. This study considers the costs and benefits of various open registries in terms of reputation, regulations, costs and requirements. Since it will only consider a subset of the options, the study should be seen as a framework for further research rather than a comprehensive analysis of the options. Furthermore, different seasteading ventures will have different needs that will affect how they weigh various costs and benefits of the different flagging options. Firstly, some essential maritime framework will be discussed. This includes a number of UN conventions, the International Transport Workers Federation and Port State Control. In 1958, the United Nations Convention on the High Seas was one of four treaties to be agreed upon by the newly established United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. One of the most important articles in this treaty is Article 5.1, which although asserting that there should be a genuine link between the state and the ship flying its flag, also declares that each state will fix the conditions for granting its nationality to ships. Granting its nationality to ships. This has essentially enabled countries to decide what their own rules are for permitting ships to fly their flag. While many countries have indeed embraced the genuine link principle, a large number have ignored it and grant their flag to foreign owned ships. These countries are those known as open registries or flags of convenience. The 1982 Convention on the Law of the Sea sets the limits for state jurisdiction over the seas. It asserted that states' territorial waters extended up to 12 nautical miles from their coastline, giving them exclusive jurisdiction in this area. Beyond this 12 nautical mile limit is what is known as international waters. However, there are still a couple of other zones in these waters in which some areas still fall under the scope of the coastal state. Beyond the territorial waters is another 12 nautical limit known as the contiguous zone, in which states can still enforce laws and customs, taxation, immigration and pollution. The last limit of importance set by the Convention is the Exclusive Economic Zone, which extends up to 200 nautical miles from the coastline, and is an area in which the coastal state has exclusive exploitation rights of natural resources. Therefore, sea steads should most likely operate at least 24 nautical miles from a country's coastline if they wish to engage in, for example, tax-free activities or the banking sector but should be located at least 200 nautical miles off the coast if they wish to engage in activities that exploit natural resources such as fishing. In areas where coastal states have no jurisdiction, ships are subject to the laws of the country whose flag it is flying. In order to achieve the highest degree of independence, early seasteading projects should therefore aim to use the flags of states operating open registries that are willing to grant ships as much autonomy as possible. In 1986, the UN Convention on Conditions for Registration of Ships 
made an attempt to put an end to the concept of open registries and reiterate and enforce the genuine link principle introduced in 1958. It would have come into effect if 40 states with a total of at least 25% of the world's shipping tonnage had become contracting parties to this convention. However, only 14 countries signed the convention, of which only the Ivory Coast, Egypt, Libya and Mexico ended up ratifying it. Subsequently, another 10 states succeeded to the treaty, bringing the total of states party to the convention up to 14, still below the 14 necessary for it to have come into effect. Without ratification of this treaty, states that operate open registries are permitted to continue to do so. Having been drafted 16 years ago, it is doubtful whether this convention will indeed ever come into effect. The International Transport Workers Federation is a federation of transport workers unions claiming to be the sole trade union representing the interest of workers on ships flying flags of open registries. In 1974, they defined these countries they labelled as flags of convenience as those in which ownership and control of a vessel is found to lie elsewhere than in the country of the flag the vessel is flying. Other important organisations related to flagging are those dealing with port state control. While there have also been a number of memorandums established between countries of other regions in the world, such as the Caribbean, the Black Sea, the Gulf region and the Indian Ocean, to this day the Paris Memorandum on Understanding of Port State Control and the Tokyo Memorandum on the Understanding of Port State Control covering Europe and Canada um, in terms of the Paris Memorandum and covering the Asia-Pacific region in terms of the Tokyo Memorandum can be considered the most important treaties dealing with port control. Annual reports are published in which countries are divided into black, grey and white lists based on the inspections and detentions carried out by the states that are signatories of the memorandums. Flags with high detention rates are placed on the blacklist. Those with a medium detention rate are placed on grey lists, while those with low detention rates are found on the white list. The USA is not a signer of any of the memorandums, but carries out its own port state control and also develops a blacklist of countries based on their detention ratio. This ratio is based on the number of ships that have been detained in relation to the number of ships that have been inspected. It will be wise for early sea states wishing to take advantage of open registries to pick a reputable flag. Therefore, the lists developed by port control authorities of Europe, Canada, the USA and the Asia-Pacific region will be used to determine some of the better options. The following list shows the countries that the International Transport Workers Federation is labelled as flags of convenience. The list, however, is seemingly outdated or incomplete, as there seem to be a number of countries missing and a number of countries that should no longer be on the list. Tonga, for example, suspended its open registry in 2002, while countries such as the Cook Islands, Dominica, Kiribati, St. Kitts and Nevis and Tuvalu are also known to operate open registries. Furthermore, countries like Equatorial Guinea, Mauritius, Sao Tome and Principe and Sri Lanka do not seem to operate large scale registries and will therefore be excluded from the study. The following table shows how the rest of the open registries rank in the 2010 reports on port state control by the countries party to the Paris and Tokyo MOUs and the detention ratio of flags targeted by the US Coast Guard. Being targeted on two points is comparable to being on the grey list of the MOU, while being targeted on seven points is comparable to being on the black list of the Paris and Tokyo reports. A combination of the Paris and Tokyo memorandums lists and the US targeted flag list suggests that of the identified countries operating open registries, Bolivia, Cambodia, Georgia, North Korea, St. Kitts and Nevis, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines would be among the worst options in terms of their reputation in Europe, Canada, the USA and Asia Pacific. Meanwhile, there are a total of six countries left that operate open registries that are on both the Paris and Tokyo's memorandums white lists and not targeted by the US list on any point. These are the Bahamas, Bermuda, Cayman Islands, Cyprus, Liberia and the Marshall Islands. For practical purposes, Five of these will be looked into in more depth, meaning the Cayman Islands, the lowest ranked by the recent Paris Memorandums report, will be excluded. Panama, which although 
on the two-point target list for the USA in 2010 remains the classic example of an open registry, and it continues to be the largest flag of registration in the world, and will therefore also be looked into in more depth. Panama claims to be one of the best places in the world to register ships. Once one registers with a Panama Ship Register service, ship owners will have the advantage of ta tax breaks that Panamanian law offers within the Panama Maritime Authorities and legislation. The Panama Register of Ships is the largest in the world and allows ships to operate in international trade without taxation. The Panama Ship Register is open to all citizenships or nationalities. Only a legal representative in Panama must be appointed. The Liberian Registry is the second largest in the world and represents 11% of the world's ocean-going fleet. Those who can register are Liberian citizens or national Liberian corporations, partnerships or activities registered in Liberia as foreign maritime entities, also known as FMEs. The FME is the ownership aspect that makes the Liberian Registry an open one. The Bahamas Maritime Authority is a semi-autonomous statutory corporation that was formed in 1995 in order to establish a vehicle for registration of vessels in the country with the sixth largest fleet in the world. The authority has offices in Nassau, London, New York, an agency in Tokyo, and it represents the Bahamas at the International Maritime Organization. The success of ship registration in the Bahamas is attributed to several factors, such as political and judicial stability, a good business environment, and outstanding banking services. Strategic location, popularity as a holiday destination, modern and well-equipped harbours, and adherence to international standards and principles. There is no requirement for local ownership of a Bahamian registered ship. Foreigners may serve as officers and crew members in the registered ships, provided the officers and are holders of professional certification accredited by the Bahamas Maritime Authority. The Bermuda Department of Maritime Administration operates the ship registry in Bermuda and claims a number of advantages, such as a strong and clear legal system based on UK maritime law, a politically stable jurisdiction, a British flag, part of the Red and Sign Group, a registry that is available 24 hours a day to suit all possible time zones, and a flag that is at the very top of the Paris Memorandum's whitelist for port state control. The ownership of a Bermuda ship is divided into 64 indivisible shares. It is a requirement that a majority of these shares are owned by qualified people. In general, these are British citizens, British dependent territory citizens, a body corporate registered in the UK and UK dependent territories, or a body re corporate registered in the EU or the European Economic Area. Although Cyprus has a lot to offer in terms of infrastructure and maritime administration, its main advantage is cost. In terms of registration fees and taxes, Cyprus is considered to be among the most competitive shipping centres in the world. More than half the shares in the ship must be owned by a Cypriot national, by a company established and having its registered office in Cyprus, or with specific authorization by a company registered outside of Cyprus but controlled by Cypriots. The Maritime Services Group of the International Registries provides ship registry service and flagged state administration for the Marshall Islands. Its advantages include having over 60 years of experience administering vessels and its decentralized operations providing customers with 24-hour service from its 23 worldwide offices in Asia, Europe and the United States. This table compares the costs for flying the flags of the different countries. These costs are in terms of their net registered tonnage of the ships. In terms of registration costs, Panama and Cyprus are among the most competitive flags, even considering the latter's exchange rate from euros to US dollars. For low tonnage, Cyprus registration costs are the lowest, followed by Panama, Bermuda, Liberia, the Marshall Islands, and the Bahamas. For larger tonnage, the order is maintained, except that Panama becomes cheaper than Cyprus. The Marshall Islands, and especially the Bahamas, have registration costs significantly above the others. It should be noted that the registration fee in Liberia is waived through 2012, and could potentially be extended past this year. In terms of annual costs, Panamanian and Cypriot registries can be considered amongst the most comp 
competitive. However, the Bahamas makes up for its high registration costs with very low annual costs, the lowest among the six case studies. Bermuda's annual costs are also average compared to the other countries, while the Marshallese and Liberian registries are the most costly in terms of these annual costs. In terms of foreign influence, Bermuda is a British dependent territory. The Bahamas is part of the Commonwealth of Nations. Cyprus is an EU member state and the Marshall Islands have significant influence from the USA. Panama and Liberia, the two biggest registries, seem to be the most autonomous. Although the Liberian registry is a US-based company and this country might therefore have the possibility of interfering in one way or another. The Bahamas and Panama seem to be the best options in terms of tax breaks and business opportunities. Given the previously mentioned Liberian vessels accounting for 30% of the oil brought into the US, it is arguable that this registry too is a good option in terms of business. The ownership requirements suggest that Cyprus and Bermuda operate semi-open registries, as they do in fact have some rules regarding nationality. Theoretically, all EU citizens or companies should be able to take advantage of these registries, but for those outside the EU, this might be more difficult. The Marshallese and Liberian registries accept any foreign maritime entity, and foreign owners should register as such if they wish to fly the flags of these countries. Meanwhile, Panama and the Bahamas also have minimal requirements when it comes to nationality of owners. All in all, for ships wanting to fly one of these flags for an extended period of time, in terms of cost, the Marshallese can be seen as the least appealing. In terms of cost, the Cypriot and Panamanian are the most beneficial. However, the requirements and regulations in Cyprus, for example, the, their nationality requirements, are somewhat stricter than those in Panama making the latter one slightly more attractive. Bermuda, being a British dependent territory, also has significant foreign influence and requirements that makes it less of an open registry, or less convenient than the other countries in this study. Liberia's high annual costs make it less appealing for long-term projects, as other flags would significantly reduce the long-term costs. This would suggest that Panama and the Bahamas remain as the best options for choosing a flag. The first is however listed on the two-point target list by the US, while the latter has a very high registration cost. This should not, however, stop long-term projects from registering with them, given the cheap annual costs. The study shows that there are a number of pros and cons to using each flag, and no option is perfect. It will depend on each seasteading project to determine which factors they regard as more important than the others as only this will enable them to make a decision for what flag to fly. This study has, however, provided a framework for doing so, having used these countries' reputation, regulations and costs as tools to create this framework. Further research could provide a more in-depth analysis of the options. I would like to thank the Seasteading Institute for allowing me to conduct research for them and look forward to seeing how Seasteaders put the research into action.